All right, I thought this could be an interesting video to make. Listen, maybe I'll make a video on what Sneed will bring to the Titans, but let's be honest. The Chiefs uh, are coming off of a Super Bowl victory, back-to-back -back Super Bowl victories. They lost their number one corner. I kind of think the bigger story is how are they going to respond to this, and what could this potentially mean for them, as it could be a huge loss. If you follow this channel, you know how much I've talked about the importance of good corners. Well, let's get into first... Real quick, I think kind of goes without saying, but let's just talk about what Sneed meant to this team these past couple years. This play, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup going up against Debo Samuel on this one. So not an easy guy to go up against, not an easy route to try and cover. However, you see Sneed is all over it. Purdy tries to get the ball to Samuel, just doesn't work out at all. Great defense by Sneed. This is just what he does consistently. He wins one-on-one -on -one matchups consistently. A lot of times what you might do in a situation like this where you're like, okay, well, how much is that going to hurt the Chiefs? You know, how much is losing a player going to hurt the Chiefs is you would go back and say, well, what happened when he was injured? What happened in missed uh, playing time? Another issue, which is a pro in Sneed's, uh, you know, pro column is that Sneed has played every single game these past two years and he only missed two games three years ago. So he's been out there a lot. So trying to find some like, you know, uh, with and without stats, it doesn't really work out that way. Uh, the only game that he missed last year was the final game of the season when they rested their starters because they had the playoffs already locked up. But one thing I want to mention as well is I think some people kind of view corners as, well, okay, yeah, you know, you're losing Sneed. You're losing the value he brings to the table. But you're not. You're not just losing the value he brings to the table. You're not just losing the good plays that he would make and him being able to cover, uh, you know, the guy he's covering. You're actually losing significantly more than that. And let me use a quick chart to explain exactly what I mean. These are the top four corners for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Chuck McDuffie's at the bottom because he's the slot corner. You didn't have Legereus Need, Jalen Watson, and Joshua Williams. I put Watson in the number two role. You could have him in the number three role. Watson did have more snaps, but neither one is out there every snap. They kind of have been a more rotational in that uh, you know situation and, and have both played very well, I would say. Uh, I think they both work real underrated parts of this Chiefs, uh, you know, team playing so well in this in winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls because they were both drafted uh, just two years ago and the addition of both of them have really helped. And I think a lot of Chiefs fans might say, well, we're okay with losing Sneed because we have, you know, uh, a lot of depth, which they absolutely do. Here is the issue. So let's use San Francisco just as an example because, you know, that's what happened uh, is they played each other in the Super Bowl last year. And this is, if you look at San Francisco's top four players, this is kind of what, what, Kansas City was doing a lot. I know I showed a play where Legereus need locked down Samuel, but uh, on this one, it's going to be, you know, usually what they were doing is uh, Sneed would be on Ayuk, and you'd have McDuffie on Samuel in the slot right there. So this is kind of the typical situation. Legereus need covering Ayuk, Jalen Watson covering Kittle, and Joshua Williams covering Jennings. Again, they, they, this, they did not do one thing every single snap. But this is, you know, let's just use this as an example of this is what you want to potentially do. Well... Now there's no more Sneed. So we take him off of the list, and you might think, okay, well, that should open up things for Brandon Ayuk. That's not all it does, because you have to move up Jalen Watson and Joshua Williams. So now you look at it, like, yeah, now Jalen Watson's going to try and cover Brandon Ayuk. That's a must, much bigger mismatch. But also Joshua Williams is now going to have a tougher matchup, and... I'm not even sure who their number, th you know, I guess number four corner in this case is because, you know, they don't they don't have a guy on the roster who had over 100 snaps last year. Maybe they're going to draft a guy, you know, remains to be seen. I'm sure Chiefs fans have theories already, um, but it, it now creates three tougher matchups for the coverage unit. Now, again, like I said, I like Jalen Watson. I like Joshua Williams, and I think maybe they could come through. Uh, it just it's it's a question mark at this point. Because, like, you know, I went back and rewatched that Super Bowl, uh, which I feel like every time I end up watching rewatching the Super Bowl like a million times because uh, there's always so much information to get out of it. Uh, but right here, this is a good example where it's Chris Conley, the receiver for the 49ers, who isn't necessarily a great receiver. He's not elite or anything like that. Going up one-on-one -on -one against Jalen Watson. So, again, something that on paper would be a favorable matchup for Kansas City. However, when this play begins, you're going to see Conley runs a good route and gets open on this play. I mean, you see there is separation. So regardless of the throw or anything like that, this is not 
ideal coverage. And again, it's going to happen. Your life of a corner is not winning every single time. You never get credit when you do cover a guy well because the ball usually doesn't go your way uh, and always get the blame when you cover a guy poorly. But still, he covered uh, you know, his man poorly on this one. As you see, you know, uh, well thrown ball there. And you just ha- have to wonder a little bit of while Watson and Williams have won at high rates so far in the NFL, if you give them tougher matchups, you know, they might still win at high rates. That's totally possible. It, they might not as well, though. And I think it would be foolish to assume one thing or the other is going to happen. To me, it's just a question mark. Now, one thing going over here, just the just thing I thought, I, I don't know if this is, you know, this might just be me, uh, you know, with my tinfoil hat on, but just a, a, a theory I had, I suppose, or not even theory, just a question of, you see, you know, this play, it's not going to be luxurious need on this one. This is actually going to be Trent McDuffie, the slot corner, right? Elite slot corner. Well, watch what happens. Covering Debo Samuel, watch as they're going to put Samuel in motion. They're going to have him essentially be the deep threat on this play. He's going to be an outside receiver, and since McDuffie is covering him, well, now McDuffie has to be an outside corner. And while McDuffie is kind of known as a slot corner, in college, he would play a good amount of outside corner, and right here, when Purdy takes a snap, he's going to, you know, uh, avoid the pressure and fire down the field. But you see, there isn't a ton of separation at all. You get why Purdy made the throw. Hey, Debo Samuel in the end zone on a third and 14. Why not take this chance? However, McDuffie makes the play. And, you know, I- I'm going to ask the question, could McDuffie be a, you know, outside corner? Is that where maybe this goes? Even if that's not how you start out the season, it's an option on the table. If it turns out that neither Watson or Williams can be that true number one, maybe you try out McDuffie in that role. It's not, it's not what you ideally would want, I don't think, but it is a an option on the table. For me personally, uh, you know, I, I would say I don't want to mess up a good thing. Uh, I like McDuffie as a slot. He's a great slot corner. Let's just keep him as a slot corner. But I'm just saying, if things do go to hell, if they need an outside corner, th- th- there's there's ways to maneuver if you're Kansas City. They do have depth, and I don't think this is going to be a move that's going to hurt them in a lot of regular season games, probably, because you don't play a team like San Francisco's receiving core in the regular season that frequently. But come playoff time, you do play those teams. And, uh, you know, that's where you have some question marks there. Like, listen, you know, it's going to hurt the Chiefs. Like, losing Snead is going to hurt the Chiefs. To pretend it you know, isn't, is going to be foolish. They're still the Chiefs, and you obviously have to, you know, you kind of have to always say, well, they're the Chiefs, they'll probably figure it out. Yeah, they probably will. But still, it is a, something that on paper is a concern, and it, you know, it's going to make them worse. Now, that doesn't mean it's necessarily the wrong move either. They they had to clear up some salary cap space. They have depth at that position. They did get a third round pick back for it. So, Again, we can agree or disagree about the move. Personally, I would have done what I could to keep Snead, cut you know, cut players in other areas to make it happen. Uh, you know, but and, and this is part of why I was so harsh on that Jawan Taylor contract, right? Because I was like, I don't think he's going to give you what you think he's going to give you. And they could have, you know, they could have kept Snead if they didn't sign that Jawan Taylor contract. So it's kind of a tough bind that they're in. But at the same time, at this point, it is what it is. You know, that contract's on the books. You got to make a move. This is the move they made. It is going to hurt them. But the question is how much. And and it might not be that much. It just, it's, there's a big question mark with Kansas City now that there wasn't with their defense heading into last year. That's kind of how I view all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.